Building a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh deck is expensive, but not necessarily difficult. With tools such as TCG Player and eBay, duelists around the world are able to have access to any card they can imagine, just at a few clicks of a mouse. I decided to take on the ultimate challenge. Starting from just three structure decks and on a budget of under $40 a week, I'm going to attempt to construct a competitive deck entirely from sealed product. No trading, no buying individual cards online. All leading up to taking on one of Yu-Gi-Oh's biggest challenges, topping a Yu-Gi-Oh Championship Series event. This is show you. Unsurprisingly, Pendulum Evolution is the next set that we're grabbing for our sealed only Yu-Gi-Oh deck released June 23rd of 2017. That's almost like two years ago, man. That's crazy. This set absolutely changed the meta landscape as soon as it was released. It allowed Pendulum Magicians to seal a tier one spot in the meta. Uh, just a whole bunch of extremely powerful cards released into this set as well as a whole bunch of really good reprints. A lot of the cards we are looking for for our deck. Of course, we are looking for all the Magicians, we are looking for Chronograph Sorcerer, we are looking for Super Rare Pendulum Calls, we are looking for just a whole bunch in this set. I think this is going to be our first great leaps towards uh, adjusting our main deck to be able to play a different strategy rather than just the Endymions. Very excited to crack open this box. This box cost me literally about $40 on the nose. It was like $40.95. Give me a break whole bunch of packs to get into. I guess we'll start with the left. All right, guys, whole bunch of packs of Pendulum Evolution. Let's hope we get lucky. Pack number one. And the first card, <laughs> all right, a uh, Double Iris Magician. A banned card is the first card we pull. Oh, let's focus. I didn't play particularly much during the time this card was banned, but I do realize that it is an absolutely broken effect here. Not something we can play, unfortunately. Got Time Pendulum Graph. This is actually a really good card when this set was released. Uh, I still think it might be an okay card. Might be something to consider for our strategy here if we want to play it. We got an Unwavering Bond. A Magical Abductor. Oh, look, we can bling out ours. And uh, Summoner's Art. I forgot this was in the set. This was a really massive reprint back in the day as Clifford's had just taken off. I think this also got a reprint in like an Astral Pack, but having a really easy, accessible copy of this was really nice to have, as I think the only other rarity it was in was a short printed rare in a set. Huh, pretty interesting. Alrighty, pack number two. I don't like having the ultra rares at the front, it kind of like removes some of the suspense, but we got a white wing magician, which is, again, not one of the magicians that we're really going to be playing, I think. We have a star pendulum graph, which this is not a really bad card at all. Uh, I think this one like searches and protects or something. For our first super rare, we have a noble dragon magician. And then we have an Oaf Dragon Magician, that's a good one, and a Master Pendulum, the Draco Slayer. Oaf Dragon Magician is definitely one we needed, we're going to be playing that. One of the better Magicians, these other ones, um, Draco Slayers, I still miss the format where Draco Pals were, like, the hot deck. That was a great format. Tons and tons more packs to go here, not really concerned that we're not pulling anything substantial off the bat. I'm struggling to open these. Oh my god, another Double Iris? Really? Whatever, we got a lot more ahead of us. Double Iris, a Purple Poison Magician. Here we go, this is one of the really good ones. Interesting thing about these magicians is their pendulum effects, like this one, where it can destroy itself from the pendulum zone to give a monster 1200 attack. If it pops itself, it can also activate its second effect to pop a card on the field. Very powerful how they both work in tandem like that. Uh, these cards are just absolutely nuts in like almost every way. Also a scale one, very useful to have, very good card. An Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon, kind of useful to have with the Odd Eyes Fusion as it's something to dump from the extra deck. Uh, we don't have one of those yet, but that is in this pack. We have a Satellar Knight Zephrox Cyton. Is that how you pronounce that? And then we got a Tuning Magician. As for anything to write home in this set, I don't think there's anything too crazy. Ah, Chronograph Sorcerer, that's one. So we're gonna need three of this fella. I think this is the most expensive card in the set right now. I wanna say, don't, don't quote me on that, but uh, we're gonna need three of him. He's absolutely crazy. The only one of his brothers still standing as Astrograph Sorcerer is banned. Behind him, we got whew, Time Star Magician. I don't know if we'll be summoning this, but hey, we can throw it in the extra deck. We got the space. Zafraxi, Treasure of the Yang Zing a Zephra Define Strike, and a Dragon Pulse Magician. We could actually maybe consider playing the Zephra variant to start off with if we pull off enough cards. Cracking another one here. We get a Time Star Magician again. Again, not too worried about these because you get two Ultras and another White Fang Magician. Metal Foes Counter, another Zephra Divine Strike, and a Pendulum Storm. 
we got a star pendulum graph, we got another double iris magician, a performed pal skull crabat joker, a hypno sister, and an enlightenment paladin. Wow, that pack was like really bad, I think. Are you serious? Why are these so difficult to open? All right, we have a, another time pendulum graph here. A harmonizing magician, that's one. This card's absolutely crazy. Probably another one of the better cards of the set. We definitely need two to three of her. And then we have a ritual beast tamer, Zeph for Wendy, stargazer magician, and Satellar Knight Zephyr Thuban. Oh, see, that one just tore apart real quick. And it's an Astrograph Magician. Sorcerer, excuse me. Astrograph Sorcerer is, yes, forbidden in the TCG here, so we're not going to be able to play him. But this card was crazy back when it was playable. And then we have another Harmonizing Magician. Yes, that's two of them. That's, I, I think, all we needed. If we pull a third, that's great. But a third is not necessary, for sure. And then we have an Oracle of Zephra, which is not a bad super. There we go. We can play more Zephra cards now. We have an amazing pendulum and we have an odd eyes absolute dragon. All right, another pack here. We got a third time star magician. Thanks, really needed that one. And we have an, another chronograph sorcerer, yes. If it doesn't sound like I'm getting too excited for these, it's because I got an entire box here. I'm almost confident I'm gonna be pulling three of, of a lot of the cards I will need. So uh, chronograph sorcerer getting the second though is really hot. I just need that third for sure. We have a metal foes adamanti. A Master Pendulum the Draco Slayer and a Cleefort Scout. Another pack here. We got a White Wing Magician, another Purple Poison Magician, and a Pendulum Call. Super rare. I'm going to definitely be needing three of this card, and if the Supers have shown anything, it might be a little bit difficult getting three of this. A Cleefort Monolith and a Lecter Pendulum the Drake Overlord. Alrighty. Another Astrograph Sorcerer. Hey, if this card ever comes off the list, at least we'll be able to play two in the deck, right? And then we got a Black Fang Magician. Nice. Needed one of these fellas. Uh, this guy's also really great. Then we have a Pendulum Reborn, a Rare Metal Foes Bismagear, and a Ritual Beast Tamer Zephra Implica. Oh, look, back to back Black Fang Magicians. I'll take it. And then the card behind it, phew. Oh, yes, the third Harmonizing Magician. If it would get in focus here, you guys can check that out. Look at that. That's the third one and the final one we need. If we pull a fourth, I won't be upset, but uh, it could have been something better. And then we have a Metal Foes Orichalc, a Zafrenu, Secret of the Yang Zing, and a Metal Foes Counter. Still no sign of an Odd Eyes Fusion or an Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. Both are super rares. Both would be really cool cards to have to add to the deck in the early stages here. That's, I think, the third or fourth Astrograph Sorcerer? Jesus. And then another Time Star. That's the fourth one for sure. Dragon Pulse, Cleefort, and Dragon Pit Magician. This is not bad, as this is an out to Mystic Mine right now. <laughs> the fourth Harmonizing Magician. Okay, I didn't really expect to be pulling four of everything. I was hoping to get a little bit different cards, but... Uh, all right. And another chronograph. That's the third chronograph. Thank God. Okay, that's one that I don't mind getting a third of. We got a rescue hamster, a summoner's art, and a wisdom eye magician. That's a good super rare. I needed at least one of these fellas. Every pack is giving me something playable here. We're going to have a lot of deck building due after that. <sighs> really? Five harmonizing magicians here. All right, cool, I guess. <laughs> is this like the exact copy of the last pack I just had? That's insane. I wonder if the super rares are going to be the same too. I doubt it, but uh, wouldn't that be something? Pendulum Shift, Ritual Beast of for Wendy, and Stargazer Magician. All right, crack it open. That's another Double Iris Magician. What is up with all these banned cards in this box? Double Iris, Star Pendulum Graph, Dragon Pulse, Doom Star Magician, and another Zephraxi. Another Purple Poison Magician. Lots of repeats here. Another Astrograph Sorcerer. Typical, you know. Uh, Dharma Eye Magician. Metal Fuzz Crimson Knight, and a Time Gazer Magician. I at least needed one of these. This is going to be able to be pulled off of our Chronograph Sorcerer. The three of them, well, four of them, actually, that we pulled. So, glad we got the one of them. We only needed one. Oddly enough, I feel like I'm having trouble pulling the Super Rares that I wanted. Like, I need another Pendulum Call. I need another two Pendulum Calls. But I'm, I'm, I keep pulling these Ultras that are, like, decent. Like, Purple Poison, another... That's six. Harmonizing Magician count is at six. Pendulum Shift, Unwavering Bonds, and another Metal Foes Ori Cow. Down to our last few pack. Is that another Time Star? I swear. Oh my. Black Fang, Folk Cult's Cannon, Skull Crabat, and another Doom Star. All right, let's go again. Oh my God. Yet another Chronograph, and oh, what is this pack? Cleefort Monolith, Rare Foes, and Archfina Centric. This is still probably one of my favorite artworks, and also just favorite card designs in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's not very good, but I like it nonetheless. Another pack here. <laughs> I don't know what I expected. 
That, oh, that's like the seventh. There's a pendulum call though, we'll take that. Pendulum call and an odd eyes pendulum dragon and an, oh, there we go, three different super rares. We haven't seen these ones yet, thank God. Time pendulum graph, again. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna even say anything. Hypno sister, Zephyr thing, and another Zephyr divine strike. Man, I didn't even pull any more oracles of Zephyr and everything. I keep feeling like these packs are either like really, really good for what they are, or they're, they're just struggling, man. I, I'm missing a lot of good supers that I would have liked to pull. Star pendulum graph, time pendulum graph, both the pendulum graphs neat. Fraxy, Ori Calc, and another Oracle to Zephyr. That's the second. All right, last pack. We got a purple poison, and we got a black fang magician. Both of these that I've already had. For supers, we got Echo, Oscillation, Metal Foes Adamant, and Zephyr. It is pouring outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that. All right, that being said, I'm gonna pull out all the really, really good cards. We're gonna pull out the deck. We're gonna make some big, big changes. Stay tuned. We did pull three Chronograph Sorcerer. We pulled a lot more than three, but we're playing three of the Chronograph Sorcerer. But we also got the uh, Time Gazer Magician to go with it. We only pulled the one. Thank God we pulled the one. Otherwise, this card would not be nearly as powerful as it is. We got three Harmonizing Magician. I don't know if I'm going to manage to put three in the deck here, but I think I might as well find space for it. We have a Purple Poison Magician. We have a Wisdom Eye Magician an Oaf Dragon Magician. These are the other three that we're going to be playing. Oh, I might as well put Black Fang in. Who am I kidding? There we go. Whip out the Black Fang Magician there. We'll play him too. Uh, again, these are cards we can grab off a of Harmonizing Magician, but they've also got very powerful effects. Pur poison popping a card. Wisdom Eye replacing itself from the scale. Oaf Dragon can grab something from, I think, the extra deck back to our hand with it. And then Black Fang, I think also special summons from our hand, I want to say. Also pulled the Dragon Pit, but it wasn't effect, so I didn't want to include it in the regular lineup there. But uh, this is our way to out Mystic Mind. I'm glad we got the one. We at least needed one of it. And then to grab all these suckers, we did pull two Pendulum Call. That's going to be able to grab this whole engine. Very, very powerful card. I'm glad we pulled at least two of it. Would have been nice to grab all three, but I, I don't think I was that lucky. All right, and then after some debate, I did decide to whip out at least some Zephyr cards. We're gonna try it out here. I'll explain my reasoning. I think pulling double of the Oracle of Zephra made me really reconsider this because this card is a very, very good Yu-Gi-Oh card. It allows us to search any Zephra card from our deck to our hand, I think. Zephra Monster, about the same thing though. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with the Zephras here because again, I'm not a huge fan of how they play, but I think for now, at the state our deck's in, this is gonna be a really nice addition to put in for today. Uh, we did pull two of the uh, Spell Trap Searcher. This guy is the really, really Really important one. That's of course gonna be able to grab our Zephyr Divine Strike, which is that spell trap monster removal. Super important. And then for the other ones, we I just decided to put a Zavraxty in here, which is just essentially scale seven, but it also pops sets. Zephyr Wendy, which is gonna be able to add from the extra deck back to hand. Zephyr Thuban, which pops monsters, and I decided to play two of them. Quite the array of cards, I would say. Let's see what we can do to add all these cards to the main deck here. I believe we're gonna be changing up our strategy a lot. I think the Spellbook engine is going to be the first one to go here. <sighs> we're gonna have to cut Magister too, I think. I guess I have Oracle of Zephyr, which is a way better field spell. I don't think these are gonna make the cut. Jewel Unlocked is a great hand trap. It's not good against absolutely every matchup right now though. So I think we can move these to the side deck. All right, so before we go off the locals, I'm gonna show you guys the updated list here. Lots of changes, as you saw. We pulled a lot of things. I think we changed the entire strategy of the deck. One thing I'm a little concerned about with this deck, though, is that there's no really big bombs in it. Like, there's no big plays that I can make, except the only thing was summoning this thing from, like, its scale with its scale effect. And now that we've changed the complete strategy where spell counters isn't going to be, like, the forte of the deck, we might not even be able to pull that off anymore. Nevertheless, I do think this deck is definitely in a lot better state than it was before. Adding like 24 new cards in the main deck definitely changes it up a lot. So I'm gonna go over really quickly. I'll try to explain some new things to you guys that I figured out uh, and we'll go from there. So we're gonna be playing now just two enemy and master magic. Uh, the, really the only way we wanna pull this card off is from Servant. It still is possible to be able to pull it off from the scale with spell counters through cards like the, the Mythical Beasts. We're not gonna be seeing that as often. If anything, it's just going to be the big guy that we bring out from this. Most builds only play one. We're gonna be cutting it to one eventually, but I wanna stick with two to see how that works. Of course, we're playing the three Servant, still the best card with that engine. We are playing the three Chronograph Sorcerer, three Harmonizing Magician, like I said, pulling any Magician from our deck is super powerful. And then for the one of the Magicians that we can pull from the deck with it, we got Pit, Black Fang, 
Oaf, Wisdom Eye, and Purple Poison Magician. Oh, and the Time Gazer Magician for the uh, Chronograph Sorcerer. Still opting to play the three Magical Abductor. I got the one blinged out there. Check that out. Uh, and then the Zephyr Engine, of course. We got two of the Secret of the Yang Zing, one of the Ze two of the Zephyr Thuban, excuse me, one of the Zephyr Thaxteon, geez, these names, and one of Zephyr Rundy. Altogether, I think the Zephyr Engine, the fact that we poured two Oracle, it might be a little bit more playable. Uh, again, just being able to seal at least one Zephyr Divine Strike set in the back row for turn one. Significantly better first turn plays than we've had probably this entire time. And then I decided to look back and I did put in the one Master Service and the one Jackal King, partially due to the fact that a commenter told me that Servant can actually summon any card that can hold spell counters from the deck. Therefore, we're able to pull this from the deck or this from the deck with that. But also these cards are just really good in general too. Like their effects with their um, counters are actually not bad. For the spells, we're playing three spell power mastery to grab our Endymion stuff, playing two Pendulum Call, playing two Oracle, two Pot of Desires, two Terraforming, one Magical Dimension. Still, this is that non-targeting removal. I think this card's good. We'll make it work. And then for the traps, we're just playing two Zephyr Divine Strike. Very happy with how this turned out. I'm really excited to see how this is gonna play tonight. So, uh, let's take it to locals. All right, yet again, we're swapping out those OTS packs for packs that can actually get us something for our deck. Today, we're choosing Extreme Force because we're going after that elusive Triple Burst Dragon, which dodged the Megatons in 2018 and is actually necessary for all Guard Dragon combos. So we gotta hope we pull that. It also has uh, Master Cerberus as a secret rare, which we're a little bit less likely to get it than we will with the Megatons, but nevertheless, some decent cards here. Metaltron is not bad. That's actually something we needed for the extra deck. Cool. Just need that Ultra Triple Burst. If anything, we'll be chasing after it for a few episodes, but it'd be nice to have it first here. And the downbeat. We're back. This time, a little bit more prepared than last time. Not exactly the final build we're striving towards, but we did settle a little bit on a Zephyr Pendulum build. And uh, I think we, for the most part, got a lot of really decent cards out of it. Two Divine Strike, two Sephiranu, two Oracle. Not a bad start. Uh, we're missing the uh, Zephyr Rota card, which is a card from Maximum Crisis, which hopefully we'll be aiming to pull in our next episode. But uh, for now, I think just being able to simply dump the Safranu with the Heavy Metal Foes Electromite and being able to summon it with a Pendulum Summon to grab the Divine Strike is a pretty strong first turn play. Along with cards like Chronograph Sorcerer being able to pull Time Gazer Magician, we now have a lot more ways to be able to Special Summon without using our normal summon, which simply getting two monsters, two Pendulum Monsters on the field, being able to link them into Heavy Metal Foes Electromite before we Pendulum Summon, is a very big deal. It's what's gonna get all of our plays swinging. Couple rounds of Yu-Gi-Oh ahead of us. I think we might stand a pretty good chance to do okay today. Let's see how we do. This is a six, so 11. I will go first. Just finished round one here at Locals today and it was a, uh, it was interesting to say the least. We got a lot of really good upgrades going on in our deck here. We completely changed up the strategy, but something I feel like I'm missing is some bombs. The thing is I have some decent like turn one plays with like the Zephyr cards, uh, which is something I didn't get to see game one against Magical Muskets, where I opened up a pretty fair hand to the point where I could like summon the Electromite turn one. I wasn't able to use it in its full extent though, which I think the normal play would be to dump the Zephranu from the deck to the extra deck and then Pendulum Summon it out to get its effect. I had already had to Pendulum Summon the turn though to be able to bring out the Electromite, so I wasn't able to do much after that. I ended up on like a board of just Electromite with um, the uh, Jackal King with no counters on it. I felt like with the hand I had, there was maybe something more I could do, but uh, for a turn one board, very low impact. I was hoping to do a lot better. He's able to very easy out the Jackal King, which has no counters on it, by summoning, I think, like it's the Starlight one or something like that, and then activating a Desperado in the zone behind it. Because all the Magical Muskets allow you to activate Magical Muskets power traps from your hand. So when he activated the Desperado, he was able to pop that Jackal King, and I was not able to negate anything off of it, which essentially let me get no value out of the card. Uh, if I'm able to get even like two counters on it just by activating one spell, one negate is a lot better than zero. From there, he sets up pretty okay. From what I remember, he has the Starlight Dude, and then he has, I think, Casper's the other one, the guy that allows you to, whenever you activate a spell or trap underneath it, you can search any Magical Musket spell or trap 
from your deck in your hand, or it's just any card in general. That's a really good one. From there, like I said, I'm missing a whole bunch of bombs in my deck. I am not able to like have many follow-ups past turn one, whereas I can set up a pretty decent board with the Zephyr Divine Strikes in the back row, but outside of that, I don't have anything huge. I don't have Endymion being able to summon itself from the scale anymore like I did when I was playing the spell counter strategy. So from there, I just wasn't able to have enough gas to follow up, and uh, he eventually outvalued me with his Magical Musket. Game two was definitely a lot different though, and I opened up absolutely crazy. I opened up like Servant Chronograph, Sorcerer, and that was absolutely nutty. I think I opened up Spell Power Mastery too. I went off. I did the play like I was talking about where I took Heavy Metal Foe like Termite and I ended up dumping the Safranu to the extra deck. So when I Pendulum Summoned it out later in the turn, I was able to grab a Divine Strike from the deck. I actually also just got really greedy and I made a Saryuja with four dudes. Uh, I don't think there really was a reason for me to do it but I did it anyways, and I draw four cards just to fix my hand up a little bit. The board we ended on was Endymion with a counter on it and a negate at the ready because there was a Servant in the scale still, and then I had the Saryuja, which there was, I don't think, anything underneath it, and I had, I think, a Zephyr Divine Strike set. It was a valiant effort from the Magical Musketeers that game. He opened up his turn, I think, with the Cross Domination. I think that's what it's called. It's the one where it negates the effects of a monster and sinks it to zero, and he attempted to target the Endymion, but he didn't realize that the Endymion could not be targeted because it did have a counter on it. After that, he had to reroute the target of Cross Domination to the Saryuja, making it a 0-0 with no effect, which I wasn't really too concerned about, but from there, that was just the nail in the coffin. There wasn't a way he could deal with the Endymion, which cannot be destroyed or targeted with spells, traps, monster effects when it has a counter on it. Game 3 was very interesting. He goes first, and he opens up his turn by, I think, activating the special summoning guy, which I think it's the Starlight again. He sets up with that, and I think he sets up with Casper as well again after activating a Pot of Desires. But the problem is with the Potter Desires, oh boy, he says, it was real bad. Oh boy, you better win this game. <laughs> that pot just tore my ass up. Do you draw anything good though off of it? No. Like, oh, man. I, I really gotta think here. That Pot of Desires, he said, boned him for the rest of the game. Must have banished something pretty important out the deck because he was struggling afterwards. He uh, had the Casper and the Starlight and then he passed it over to me. I opened up fairly strong and I drew into a very good card too. I think I drew into Pendulum Call or something. I was like, oh man. It's gonna be over now. I activated my abductor in the zone that the Casper was in, which was probably a mistake. I should have activated it in the special summoning guy, but since I activated it in the Casper zone, he still had a last stand in hand and he chose to negate it. Either that or a Desperado, one of the two cards. He negated the abductor and then he was able to add another magical musket card from his deck to his hand. That was a little misplay on my part. I should have activated it in the other zone where he could only special summon a card. Maybe it'd be a little bit different, but I don't think it would have ended too differently. From there, I activated a spell power mastery because I was gonna grab the servant and still I had a lot of plays that I was able to go off. I think I was still gonna end on some nutty things, but he happened to have an Ash Blossom. I was like, all right, whatever, not a huge deal. I activated Pot of Desires and that was guaranteed to go through. So I banished 10 and I drew two cards and I don't think I drew in anything that was gonna make me have a play. So what I ended up doing is I think I just passed with nothing, hoping he couldn't kill me the following turn. Uh, go ahead. Really? <laughs> yep. Gage, really? Yeah, you you kind of you kind of stopped everything there. Turn swings back to the magical musketeer player, and he summons a dock. So right now his board is stacked with a whole bunch of magical muskets. He has the best ones currently in the zones that my scales can only be placed in, which is really really difficult for me to get around because I need to stick scales to be able to make plays go through. But he could not kill me, and that's a really big thing. I draw for turn, and I try to make some miracles happen here. I managed to fade a desperado, which he activates for turn. I forget what he. Pops pops, and I think I also fade the last stand, and then I decide to activate a Pot of Desires to try to get two more cards in my hand to be able to do something. I activate the Pot of Desires, banish ten more cards out of my deck, and draw two. Right now I'm looking at a hand of four Pendulum Monsters, which is actually really solid because I'm all going to bring those out from my hand to just try to dominate it. However, something happens and the game kind of goes awry. For some reason, my opponent picks up my extra deck, which had a face-up servant on the field, and he combines it with my main deck, which it's not an irreparable problem. I think it was something we can solve pretty easy. Uh, you just put my extra deck in my deck, I think. No, that was your banished. That was my deck up there. That was your deck? That was my deck. Okay, then I put it on. Oh, crap. That's why... <laughs> Ah, uh, man. Confusing, yes, but solvable for sure. I called over a judge and I said, hey, my opponent took my extra deck and put it in my main deck. Could you just mind separating the extra deck cards from the main deck? It should be divided pretty easily. Can you just cut the extra deck off there. We talked it through, but the judge did rule it that it was an irreparable game state, just the way it happened. 
I don't know who really was at fault of it. I don't know why my opponent picked up my extra deck in the first place to combine it with my main deck. Um, I don't know. It was just all around a really odd situation. It was a rare parable, though, and the judge ruled it on me because I didn't keep my cards in the correct zones. So I wasn't going to be able to win that game. But my opponent, he just said, you know, take the game, whatever. I, he was very upset. Uh, rightfully so, too. It, it seemed like a very easy problem to deal with, but... um. I don't know, it just didn't end up right. I, I look back on it now, I'm still confused with what happens. It sounds confusing even, just saying like he combined my extra deck with my main deck, but that's what happens. I thought it was easily solvable, but um, nonetheless, we, we took down that game due to a technicality, due to my opponent forfeiting. I don't know how to feel about it. It was it was really, really just a strange scenario overall. I wish I could give you guys more insight on it, but it did just pan out the way it panned out. So we did take down game one, match one. Um, not in exactly the best of terms, but we did take it down. I think now we can start taking games for people with a legit deck. Very excited to play. Talk to the round. I'm going to the uh, Let's have a little bit of a chat. Just got done with round two. Uh, and didn't go as well as we expected it to. After winning round one, we sat down for round two and we played against Orcus, which is a deck I really don't have a good track record in general playing against. But for a deck that's incomplete, I think it's definitely gonna struggle a little bit more. Going first, we opened up like a pretty okay hand. I'd say we opened like Servant plus a way to proc it with I think Spell Power Mastery. But the problem was is we didn't go first. Our opponent went first winning the die roll and he set up a very standard Orcus board, which includes like Galatea, Rusty Bardich, and as well as Dingirsu in the graveyard to be able to summon it back plus two back rows, I think a fog blade plus another one. That's an uphill battle for any deck to get around, but especially for mine, which is a deck that revolves around getting pretty much one effect off in the form of heavy metal, heavy metal felt electromite. It's difficult. I think I activated the Servant as well as another Spell Power Mastery. I ended up getting the Servant's two ticks, and then my opponent just sprung the trap. He summoned the Dingirsu from the graveyard with, I think it's the Symbols effect that does it, which then triggered his Rusty Bardich as well as the Dingirsu effect to send essentially two cards from my field, which were the two most important cards in my field. From there, I'm facing down a board with three plus monsters and follow-up plays the next turn. It's not looking pretty. I pretty much can't do anything for the rest of the turn. I can't summon anything. So I just pass it back, but uh, it's actually more of a concede because I can't do anything against a board that's going to get better. Game two is very interesting the way it panned out. I opened up my hand and my hand was actually the most unplayable thing I've seen in a very long time. I opened up like double abductor, two Zephyr divine strike, and another card. I, I literally couldn't do anything with that hand. What the fuck is this? Are you serious? I think I just ended up maybe activating an abductor to potentially capitalize off the fact that he might activate spells on his turn and pass. It was a very good thing that his follow-up play was summon Fiendish Rush Rhino. He was playing the BA variant of Orgus. I didn't mention that at the start, but uh, kind of relevant. His only play is summon Fiendish Rhino Warrior, attack, and pass, which is a good sign for us. I pendulum summoned out the Zafranu from my extra deck with the Heavy Metal for Electromite, but I had to complete the scales with the um, Zephyr Wendy that I had drew into. Uh, and the problem with Zephyr Wendy is you're only able to pendulum summon Zephyr monsters. So I kind of locked myself out from there for the rest of the game, really, if it just sticks in the pendulum zone. So I pendulum out the Zephyranu, and since I have both of the Divine Strikes, there's not too much I can really do there. I have two negates, but I only have one at the ready. My opponent made kind of like a weird misplay. He ended up did popping the Zephyr Wendy with an effect, which if he would have popped the Adductor, I pretty much had to concede the game, but he did pop the Zephyr Wendy, which allowed me to actually kind of go off on my turn, including that he also Link Summoned into a Nightmare Mermaid, and he didn't have any targets in deck for the effect. He forgot. So he had to leave himself with a Mermaid, plus he was able to summon a Beatrice off its effect. He didn't summon the Beatrice in attack position, which did end up letting me keep the uh, Heavy Metal Fell Electromite on my field, which was pretty interesting, but the following turn I draw and he just farfas it out of the way, which is not a big deal though, because now that my scale is open from popping Zephyr Wendy, I'm able to actually make some really good plays. I go up to a point that I can win the game because I pendulum summon a massive hand of like five cards. There's so much there, I don't even know what to do with them, but I end up using four of them, including an Endymion in my hand to bring out a Saryuja to draw into four more cards. Uh, the board state I'm in, I just need literally one spell card to be able to complete my entire board. I end up fishing four cards deep 
Keeper in my deck and I grab a Spell Power Mastery, which is the best card to grab. I activate that, I get my Abductor ready to activate, and I add myself to Dimming to my hand, which I just Special Summon off of Saryuja's effect. The fact that it doesn't have a counter is not totally relevant. Mining Board is Saryuja, Jackal King with three counters, as well as an Endymion, with a Negate at the ready because I have an Abductor with a Spell Counter. Since I was able to get counters on the Jackal King, I'm able to kill the Beatrice without its getting effect and uh, I essentially seal up the game from there. So that was game two, we move on to game three, and game three, he is going first, and he just says, how bad do I wanna fuck your day up? I was like, yeah, if it goes off, it's freaking bonkers. I don't know how savage do I feel right now. Oh, did you open, like, nutty? I don't have any responses, so you can just go off. He goes off on basic kind of orcist combos, but he ends it with a little bit of a twist. He summons a silent boot, and then he tributes that off for a Vanity's Fiend. That's your blitz? Yeah. Previous blitz. You're like, I've had a good run. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Set. Oh, all right. Pass to you. Vanity's Fiend already kind of messed my day up. I don't think I could have outed a Vanity's Fiend, but then I draw for turn, and during my standby phase, he flips up an anti-spell fragrance. Like, okay. Draw. On your standby phase. Yeah. That's why I said it's gonna be bad. Yeah. I don't think there was a card in my hand I could play at all that turn after he flipped that up. It was bad. Quick and seed. That's the match. We're doing four rounds before the cut to top eight. We'll see how we fare for these last two. Maybe we can snag another game, and maybe that'll sneak us into the top eight. See how we do. Pretty unfortunate turnout. We ended up going 2-2 today which we lost round three to another Orcus Mirbiatch. Again, my track record sucks against that deck. And in the final round, we actually won a match against True Draco, but it was not enough to get us into top eight, unfortunately. Whatever, I think the deck's off to a running start. I am very excited to see the upgrades we're hitting off in the next episode. I'll catch you guys then.